Hello, my name is Debbie Fingus, and I'm the Minister of Music at Trinity United Church in Coburg. Today we're talking about meters. Meter is how the beat of in music is divided into bars. It's particularly important to understand for handbell ringers, as you're always counting and trying to figure out when to ring that bell. The organizing structure for meter is shown at the beginning of the music using a time signature. The top number tells you the number of beats per bar, and the bottom tells you the type of note that gets the beat. So here we have 4-4, four, four, four beats in the bar, and a quarter note gets the beat. So 3-4 would be three quarter notes in a bar, and 2-4 would be two quarter notes in a bar. The bottom number isn't always four. If the eighth note is what's being counted, the bottom number would be eighth. And if a half note is what's being counted, then the bottom number is a two. In addition to understanding how many beats are in the bar, we have to know the function of the beat. So generally, the first beat of the bar is the strongest. And in 4-4, the pattern is strong, weak, medium, weak. So if we're gonna clap that, it sounds like this. Why don't we all clap that together? We'll do four bars. Here we go. One, two, three, four. It's strong, weak, medium, weak. Strong, weak, medium, weak. Um, if we have three, four, it's like a waltz. Strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak. Let's try a few bars of that. Here we go. One, two, three. Strong. Good. And then for two four, it's just strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. In addition to that, it's good to know that this is a simple meter, and we can divide those beats in half um, into equal parts. So in this case, we have four quarter notes, and then we've divided them into eight eighths notes. So instead of just counting one, two, three. Four, we get one and two and three and four and. If we wanted to break the beat into three instead of two, then we would write that as a triplet. And so um, we've got one, two, three, four. And with the uh, triplets, one, two, three, four. However, for extended passages, it's easier to write this out using compound meter. And with compound meter, the time signature changes. So instead of 4-4, four, four, and that's broken into triplets, we have 12-8. So there are 12 eighth notes written in this bar. A dotted quarter note would get the beat because three eighth notes makes a dotted quarter note when you add them together. And then, you, so you have one, two, three, four of them. And then we can count it one of two different ways. So here we have six, eight. We can either count it one, two, three, four, five, six, or one and a, two and a. With, um, so there are six, eight, there's six pulses, two beats. Nine, eight, there's nine pulses or three beats. 12, 8, there's 12 pulses or four beats. Often we count in a slower tempo, we'd count to six, and we'd just reduce it to two if it was faster. So the accents for mixed meter are correlated to the um, their corresponding simple meter. So for example, six, eight was related to two, four, so in this circumstance, we have strong, weak, strong, weak with our two, four. Six, eight is going to have the same kind of thing. Strong, weak, weak, medium, weak, weak. Stronger, net a strong. One, two, one, two. Same thing with nine, eight. Strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak was how three, four was accented. Same with nine. One, two, three. One, two, three. Each of the sets of three 
the first eighth note is the one that is accented. Once we understand these, we can move on to odd or complex meter. Here, the top number of the compound time signature isn't able to be divided by two or three. So the top number has to then be uh, broken down into combinations of twos and threes. So that's um, how the eighth notes are grouped on the page will show us um, how we're breaking up the bar. So here we have five eight, which can't divide five by three or by two. So we've got five eights, one, two, three, four, five. So we can either group them into uh, three plus two or two plus three. So it's either one and a two and one and a two and one and a two, one, two, or one, Two and a one, two and a one and two and a one, two and a. So two plus three in that case. Same thing with seven, except it can be divided in three different ways. Two plus two plus three, which would sound like one, two, three. One, two, three. Or two plus three plus two. One, two, three. Or three plus two plus two, which would be one, two, three, one, two, like that. Um, and those can change without warning in the music. There's no extra way to, to mark that other than just by the barring of the eighth notes. There's no extra thing written with a time signature or anything like that. So here's an example of mixed meter, which is when we are switching between time signatures. The piece doesn't have one time signature for the whole piece. It can go back and forth between different time signatures. So here's an example of simple mixed meter. So we can start in four, then we go to three, then there's two, and then there's four. So it's a whole string of quarter notes. And so if we were gonna clap this, and um, Try and do it with me. We're going to put the make sure we put the right accents on the right beats. So here we go. One, two, ready, clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, four. So when we're counting this, of course, the um, quarter note is remaining constant throughout. There's no pauses between. Um, and we can have the exact same number of quarter notes. And what I've done here is I've rebarred it and put it in different time signatures. And the rhythmic accent changes are really the main thing that's going to make this sound different. Otherwise, it's just how many uh, quarter notes in a row. So let's try this. This should sound different to the last thing we just clapped. Here we go. One, two, and one, two. Three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. Sounds quite different, even though it's the same note values, the same tempo. And that's uh, what meter does for us. So moving on, we have a little bit more complicated. We have complex and compound mixed meter together. So this can be tricky because it changes between an even number of pulses in the bar to an odd number. So we have the six going to the seven, going to a five. And your want might be to add in an extra eighth note, um, to kind of even out those odd bars, but you're not going to do that. So um, this is what this one would sound like. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So six, then seven, then five. They're all eighth notes. So take away those bar lines mentally and feel the pulse because we know how they're how the pulse is divided because of the, the way that it's been barred. So we've got two groups of three followed by a group of two, group of two, group of three, a group of three, and then a group of two. So accent the first in each grouping. So it sounds like this. and then write out the counting if you need to under the tricky passages. So you know exactly where to ring that bell, um, which one of those eighth notes is um, your place to do so. 
So combining simple meter, like a 4-4 bar and compound uh, or complex meter can be challenging because you're switching uh, between eighth notes and quarter notes, for example. So here we have five and then a seven and then a 4-4 bar. So it's gonna be challenging. Let's try this one together and see how you do. Here we go, ready, go. So it feels like you don't really know where to put those quarter notes. So the trick is really to subdivide and to count inside one and two and three and four and. That way your eighth notes are gonna remain constant. So let's try that again. We'll count out loud with the counting I've written in here and see how we do. Here we go, ready, try. One and two and a, one and two and three and a, one, two and three and four and. So that last part will just be one and two and three and four and. And that'll help you figure that out um, in context. So next we have combined meter. And this can happen when some pieces have more than one meter that are happening at the same time. And if this happens, you'll see two time signatures written at the beginning of a piece, one next to the other, um, and the, the piece can shift back and forth between the time signatures without warning, and sometimes they happen at the same time. So, you know, the bass bells will be ringing in one meter and the battery might be ringing in another or if you're really unlucky and you're kind of on that in-between area, you might have to ring both. So here's an excerpt of a um, piece of music. I'm going to play it for you, um, a little bit of it. With Tambourine and Dancing by Ron Mallory. Three to five octaves with optional percussion. Level three plus. Bar five. Okay, so um, if we're having a little look at this, this second page here, or actually let's go back to the first page, you'll see it has six, eight, and three, four written at the beginning. That means it's in six, eight, and three, four. Now we know that those are um, simple and um, compound meters that are related, um, but we have to know where the accents are. So the first bar is in six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they've written in the accents to help us, and the second bar will be in three, one, and two, and three, and. It's not always, and then back to six in bar three. It's not always back and forth in this piece. And there's some spots, if you look at, for example, bar 18 at the bottom, that um, it's uh, happening at the same time. So the treble bells have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the bottom has one and two and three and. That's about all we have time for today. Um, look forward to seeing you in the Zoom afterwards and answering all your questions.